It's really no secret in the online left or pretty much any of the, the, the left in America right now that there has been a very aggressive push by the right to destroy the, uh, the, the rights and the existence of trans people in particular. Now, their method for doing this has been pretty uh, tongue-in-cheek and snaky. You see, we're still at a point in society where you can't just outright call for the extermination and destruction of the rights of a minority group. Like, you still have to, like, justify doing that and subtly lead people to that conclusion, right? So for example, Donald Trump did this very effectively when it came to South American immigrants, particularly from Mexico, by saying they're criminals, they're rapists, they're thieves, they're invading, they're invaders, they hate you, they're aggressive to our culture. Like, basically leading his voters to no other position than to hate South American immigrants without actively saying you should hate them and do violence on them and, and yada yada. Not, not fully taking the mask off, right? Lately, they've been doing a very similar tactic with trans people, where instead of outright calling for their extermination, they instead very, you know, subtly uh, call them groomers and pedophiles. Now, I grew up in the good old American South in Central West Florida, all right? And I'll tell you what, if you found out your neighbor down the street was a kitty diddler, hell, you and some good old boys were damn likely to pull out some guns and go pay him a visit. Because either he was, go he was going missing, or he was moving out of that neighborhood in a week. I put on my uh, Florida Gator voice. Like, that's how that goes. The neighborhood dads, in particular, will get their guns and go knock on the door of someone they know if it's, like, a convicted, like, pedo or, or, like, convicted sex offenders in the neighborhood and drive them the fuck out. Their entire sequ sequestered communities just for pedos and sex offenders because they'll literally be killed anywhere else. So we live in a- we do live in a society where any perceived threat to our children will be met with Strong violence, you know, and justifiably so, I would say. And the right knows this. I think everybody knows this. So what better way to subtly suggest that the American people should engage in violence and, and you know, destroy the trans community than to heavily imply that the trans community are made up of pedophiles and groomers. To use the think of the children, protect the children angle. And that, and one of the biggest uh, users of this particular method is Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh is, of course, a uh, Daily Wire stooge and an absolute piece of shit. And uh, he's been one of the biggest, like, flag carriers for the anti-trans, like, push as of late. And as a matter of fact, uh, early last year, he announced that 2022 would be his year of the war against the trans agenda. Uh, and, and that was like his big thing. He put out like a, a documentary that was meant to make trans people look bad. He put out a, you can actually see it in the background of the video we're about to watch. He put out a little, little children's book that's meant to, you know, make fun of trans people. He's got uh, merch for it as well. Uh, also, I feel like, I feel like this should be brought up more in regards to Matt Walsh, but like, you know how Steven Crowder has the Mug Club? Matt Walsh has an equivalent. And it's really weird. It's called the Sweet Baby Gang. And without... I'm just... I'm not going to show you... Uh, like, just one example of the merch. I, I just googled Sweet Baby Gang Matt Walsh and searched images. And I'm just going to show you what came up. This is, in large part, the merchandise that he sells to his sweet baby gang. And the logo for it is his head photoshopped on a baby. It's really weird. Is, is this not weird? I, I can't even put into words why this makes me feel weird. There's just something about it that just makes my skin crawl.
it feels wrong to me. Uh, anyway, that, that's all you really need to know about Matt Walsh. She's also said that he violates his kids' consent all the time. Um, but, you know, that's just, you know, conservatives, pedophilia, hand in hand. That's just how it is. Um, that said, he put out this tweet uh, now over a year after declaring war on the trans agenda, saying, cry all you want, trans activists, but remember that you started this. I I'm I actually dis decidedly remember that the trans community did not start this. I I actually specifically remember you saying word for word 2022 will be your year uh of fighting the trans agenda. So no, you you actually declared that you were starting it over a year ago. Uh and and you've been doing anti-trans content for way longer than that. Also trans people just want to live and exist and y you want them dead and sequestered out of society best case scenario and uh yeah that that's not them starting it if they respond to that a little bit upset that's not that's not trans people starting it but let's watch his clip prepare to hear a very obnoxious cringy guy speak but there's another point too and this is something that i want to that's very loud jesus that was peeking into the red say specifically to the trans activists who are now crying and panicking and hysterically ranting about imaginary genocides. I say they're doing that now. They didn't just start. For the record, Tennessee just passed a bill that uh, bans drag uh, and, and like, ident like wearing clothing and presenting uh, as a gender opposite from that where you were assigned at birth. They, they like the bills vague enough to literally outlaw presenting as trans in public as well. Um, so no, they, they like to be clear, one of the core ten oh they passed two bills. Thank you, Arlexay. To be clear, and I am calling a Matt Walsh a fascist. He even calls himself a fascist in his Twitter bio. He's open about being a fascist. Um, uh, uh, one of the core tenets of fascism is that the enemy, and in this case, the enemy is trans people, is that the enemy is both strong and weak. He is at once playing the victim, talking about how this is a response to attacks and, and, you know, a danger, a threat posed by trans people, while at the same time talking about how there's nothing really happening to you. You're, you're, you're not actually really significant. You're just a bunch of people crying online. But at the same time, you're the biggest threat to Western society. It's one of the core tenets of fascism, like, like straight out of the book, core tenets of fascism doing it now. They've been doing it all along. This is all they ever do. But I want you, if you're in that group, I want you to listen to this part very closely. Please always remember this. You started it. You started it. So I see you on social media. and I, I want you to know, by the way, this is a villain speech. This is a villainous speech. This is like a Nazi general putting out a, like a radio or, or a television call to all the like the, the, the Jews living in Germany saying you started this by destroying the economy of Germany. Like complete you started this by completely made up straw man about your entire identity. And and thus uh, we have the right to exterminate you because of reasons we made up. Uh, you should feel bad. And we're and we're going to look you're, we're going to look you metaphorically through the screen, look dead in the eye with a straight face and say, knowing that they're lying, by the way, this is your fault. You did this. Listen, I, I hate I hate J.K. Rowling, but the only good comparison I can think of to like a media example is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, where Dolores Umbridge says to Harry Potter, you know, you deserve to be punished with a straight face, knowing damn well she's full of shit. And that Harry's telling the truth. Like, like that's the level of, like, audacity that Matt Walsh is operating on. The level of pure, black-hearted evil. On the news and out marching the street. Look what you made me do. Crying your crocodile tears and claiming that you're being set upon by fascist right-wingers who won't let you just live your lives in peace. What do we ever do to you, you cry? Why are you so angry at us? Well, let me answer that question. You see, the... the
I'm excited to hear the straw mans he's going to bring up. It's going to be like, why do you groom kids into be a smug cunt? Listen, I've mentioned this many times before. The reason why so many conservative propagandists, as this guy is, are so smug is because one of the core tenets of conservatism is cruelty. Being cruel and upsetting minorities and those that are on the left and doing so smugly, which is, of course, a very good way to frustrate someone, is to be wrong and smug and, and you know, rude and smug about it. it. Like, that's part of it, right? Like, they're smug on purpose because cruelty to the left and minorities that the left, you know, advocates for is a virtue on the right. This is just sort of like pure evil. You're you're, you're watching a villain speech. This video is going to be called Reviewing Matt Walsh's Villain Speech. The rest of us were living our lives. We were minding our own business. When you... Uh, Matt Walsh, I don't know if you know this, but... Thanks to the whole Steven Crowder thing, we know that Daily Wire has been paying you millions of dollars via contract to specifically tow a particular conservative right-wing line, which is right now anti-trans for years now. You've worked for the Daily Wire for years now. You weren't just some guy living your life. Ten years ago, you were doing a radio show where you were doing a fake black scent trying to mock black people. Do, do you remember the video where he calls, uh, like, I, I think it was like Obama Elementary or something, and he calls and he's like, doing this like horrible attempt at a black voice saying, uh, yeah, my kid wants to go to your school and he, he's not really the top dog in his class. Uh, will, will you accept him? And, and like, he's like purposefully mispronouncing words to confuse the woman on the other end to try to make it look like the woman on the other end who's black is like dumb or something. But it's Matt Walsh mispronouncing things and acting dumb. So he's literally just doing the closest thing he can do to blackface on radio. Like, if he had a, a screen, he would have done blackface, but he was on radio, so that he could... Like, he was probably doing blackface, but he was on radio, so we don't know. Someone find the clip. If someone links the clip, we can watch it. Black scent? I, I don't believe that's the uh, politically correct term. <laughs> um, it, it, it was... I wouldn't even call it that, because it was so bad that it, it wasn't... It wasn't really identifiable as that at first. You came along and demanded that we abandon everything we know about fundamental physical reality for your sake. That's what you did. You claim the right to walk into whatever bathroom you want, whatever locker room, whatever sports team. Nobody else- what, what, Yeah, wait, no. He, he's outright saying, no, I don't think you should be allowed. Trans people's goal is to be able to exist as the gender they identify as. Part of that involves being allowed to do the things that gender is allowed to do as long as they have like no like obviously going into a woman's bathroom and, and like sexually harassing women in there is a crime regardless of your gender identity so you're you're outright saying right now you you trans people are like what did we ever do to you well you want to be able to use the bathroom you identify with you want us to think of you as as a woman and it's like yeah that that's that's tr that's what they want. Yeah, that's their that's the what the data suggests is good. That's trans rights. That's you are the one argue so you want to take away their rights because they want rights is what you're arguing right now. It's a self fulfilling prophecy. It reminds me of the Michael Knowles clip that came out recently where he says, "I don't want to genocide trans people. How can you genocide a group of he also he literally says trans pe people. He says the people part with air quotes. Um how can you genocide a group of people that aren't even a real group of people? Transgenderism is just a made-up group, so they can't be genocided. That was Michael Knowles' response to people saying he wants to genocide trans people. And he did it with, like, this ear-to-ear, troll-face, wax-figure demon grin the entire time that he does. Have, have you seen the Michael Knowles grin? His demonic grin? Like, it, it's fitting that all of these fucking demons are also like visibly evil like they're visibly evil it helps out a lot right like you could pick this guy out in a crowd despite how mundane he looks just by like the 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 amount of yeah 
All right, back to Matt Walsh. How are we only a minute and 16 seconds through this fucking shit? Nobody else has ever had that right. Nobody else has ever had that right to just do whatever they want, go anywhere they want. To, to go to the locker room or to the bathroom? Uh, I, I, what? You get to go to the men's bathroom. Why shouldn't trans men get to go to the men's bathroom? Dude, like, th this, this logic is so twisted, too. Because, like, I, I recently saw... This one is pretty ghoulish. Thank you. Oh, good one, Kanye. Yeah. Yeah, look, he's got this weird, like... This is him smiling at the thought of, like, watching trans people being shoved into the gas chambers. For the record, conservatives are trying to bring the gas chamber back as a method for uh, executing death row inmates here in America, in the South, is, like, where it's starting in red states. And they're trying to make grooming a death penalty offense. I'll let you guys connect the dots. There's not many to connect. I feel like it's pretty straightforward. I believe it was Alabama where they were trying to bring the gas chamber back just recently. But you won. You came after our children, seeking to suck them into your suicide cult just to make... Uh, the funny thing is that conservatism, or at least what conservatives want for trans people, is objectively the real suicide cult. Um, ex like, conversion therapy has been proven to not work and to just be torture for literal decades. Like, what conservatives... They're very afraid of saying it. Like, like Matt Walsh won't even say it because it's such a dirty word. But what they suggest as the alternative to affirming trans identity is conversion therapy which has been proven not to work. The actual, like, solution, the treatment to, gen like, transgender people's uh, suicidal ideation and depression um, is affirming their gender identity, providing them with gender-affirming care, and even having the support of one friend or family member, the more the merrier. Um, the actual death cult is taking, like, trans people and forcing them to not be the identity they identify with. And Matt Walsh knows this. He has to know this in order to make effective propaganda. As I've said, he's paid to lie. And just based on the contract Daily Wire offered uh, uh, Steven Crowder, we know they probably pay Matt Walsh tens of millions a year to tell these lies. Make yourselves feel better. You tried to restructure human society to make it affirming to you personally. You wanted to force the whole world to bend to your narcissism. You tried to put words in our- For the record, these quotes will look- Like, in 10 years, these quotes will literally look no different than someone saying, you want the whole world to bend to the narcissism of black people who want to go and drink from white water fountains. That, that's literally the level of evil we're operating on here. Saying that black people are narcissistic for wanting to drink from the whites-only water fountain. Oh! Black people and their audacity to want to go everywhere, to go into white people's spaces. It is perfectly analogous. Matt Walsh would have a fucking piss fit if, if I brought up this comparison to him and be like, it's not the same, it's not the same. But if you really think about it, in this case, it is the same. We're talking about cis people's fifis being hurt by seeing trans people in public. That's what they're mad about, seeing trans people in public. That's no different than racists who were triggered about having to see black people in public, so they insisted on having segregated spaces where they could have a break from seeing black people. Our mouths. You tried to control... Well, he definitely agrees with that too, but you have to understand, our society hasn't quite degraded to the extent that you can outright say you support segregation and, and have broad, like, societal acceptance. All how we speak, even when you're not in the room... Your ego is so out of control that you even tried to take possession of parts of the English language, like you can own what? them what? as a pet. You waved that hideous... For the record, by the way, these are the people who say that uh, they, them pronouns are not grammatically correct in, like, used for one person singularly. Like saying they went to the store is not grammatically correct when it's very explicitly grammatically correct. Like, th these people are, are, will insist objective falsehoods about modern vernacular English and claim that they are correct and it is the left trying to distort reality. People have used singular they-them 
for a very long time, and these people insist it is grammatically incorrect and delusional to do so. And yet, I've seen them do it in their own videos without even realizing they've done it. Because people use singular they them for individuals all the fucking time. It only becomes a huge issue to people when it's in the context of a non-binary person. Yeah, singular they them was also used a lot in Shakespeare plays, but I'm even just talking about in more modern English history, like decades ago in the time, like in the 50s and 60s, when these people harken back to as like the golden era of America. Ridiculous flag in our face and wouldn't stop waving it. By the way, these are the people who are going out to like restaurants in New York City and burning pride flags hanging up in the restaurants. There's been a rash of this happening. And if you go on YouTube Shorts, you'll see uh, YouTube Shorts posted from big conservative channels that are praising parents that burn their kids trans or LGBT flags and uh, praising random people in public that tear uh, pride flags down and, and stomp and burn them, saying like, ha, ah, Giga Chad, and it'll have like 100,000 likes in YouTube Shorts. To be clear, these when they say waving their flag in, in, in our face, they mean like the flag being up in their kid's room or the flag being hung at a restaurant owned by like a gay owner. They, they don't want gay people to exist. That's what they mean by waving it in our face. You demanded not just tolerance, but celebration. You did all of that. That was you. And now you cry victim because some of us have simply answered no. You made. Listen, there's got to be at least one open minded Matt Walsh fan who watches to this point in the video. Can you at least acknowledge, even if you disagree with everything else I said, that it's a bit dishonest of Matt Walsh to frame all that he has done as simply some people are saying no? He's announced that he's declaring war on trans people that he and his in his company have called for the eradication of trans identity even if you disagree with my framing of what they've said and done you have to agree that he is being deliberately dishonest by saying all he's done is say no he demands many people surrendered to those demands immediately but some of us a few of us are refusing and that makes you what, a victim? You bullied most people into submission right away, but now you want to compare yourselves to Jews in the Holocaust because a, a few of us can't be controlled so easily? Well, that is just a testament to your boundless narcissism. It didn't have to be this way. Wait, wait, he's going full. He's going full villain monologue. He's going full. Didn't have to be this way. Full villain monologue. Holy shit. We need a Matt Walsh character in The Boys. Like, The Boys needs to do a character that parodies Matt Walsh. Like, this is too perfect. We need a character like this in The Boys. I feel like it's what the show's missing. Like, the, like a psychotic, megalomaniac, manipulative, mask-on, genocidal freak. Uh, to be fair, that was kind of Stormfront. Stormfront was kind of that, but we we need a Matt Walsh character full on in The Boys. That would go hard as fuck. Because, like, Matt Walsh is genuinely evil enough to be, like, some executive at Vought or something. Homelander is becoming that? No, Homelander is beyond Matt Walsh, obviously. Like, uh, he's, like, the... no, Like, all memes aside. But, like, we need, like, a char like, like, he's the perfect caricature for them to include in that show. I don't know if you guys watch The Boys, but of all shows that have political commentary that aren't, like, dedicated to politics, it's probably got the most timely and uh, prescient political commentary of, of most shows out there. It didn't have to be this way. If you were really interested in privacy, if you really simply wanted the ability to live your life as you wished, um, then you could have had that. You could have had that. If you had just said, well, I'm going to live as though I'm the opposite sex. I'm going to tell everyone that I'm the opposite sex. And I'm going to change my name and how I dress. And 
I'm going to do all of this because it's what I want to do. And it's for, for the record, Matt Walsh is supporting candidates and bills that ban these things. Like all these things that Matt Walsh is listing is like, oh, you could have just done this and we would have had no problem are things that he is actively supporting the banning of. He, he is just lying right now. That's how I want to live. Well, if you just said that, you, you could have done that. I personally still would not have agreed with your lifestyle, and I personally would not have gone along with the charade, and I would not have affirmed the lie. I would not have. But society generally would have left you alone, as you claim you want. Um, and For the record, even the majority of Republicans are not against uh, hormone blockers for uh, uh, youth. Like, to, to, to be completely clear, this anti-trans, like, push is a smokescreen. Conservatives have always been able to be a loud minority. Even when they have power, they're still a loud minority. So, like, this isn't, like, some societal push against trans people It's happening right now. It's very loud, insecure, and corrupt, and in some cases, downright evil, like Matt Walsh, people that have decided to you know, start a racket off of spreading hate about this year's particular minority to spread hate about if you're on the right. Like, it's it's a new minority every time, right? Sometimes it's immigrants from the Middle East. Sometimes it's immigrants from uh, South America. Sometimes it's uh, Jewish people. Sometimes it's a sexual minority. Um, like, sometimes it's just straight-up women, like the super anti-feminist era. Sometimes it's... Uh, anti-gay people sometimes it's anti-trans people um you know how it is right that there's always a specific minority the right is targeting as like the bad minority that is bad right now and right now it's trans people and that's the bad minority they're attacking it's a cycle it's a wheel they'll find they'll, they'll go on to the next group of my uh, like minority group that they can attack that they can frame as being bad and make a racket off of next I know that because that was already the experience of the very small minority of trans identified people in this country up until the last decade. One thing you guys have to remember, I know this is really scary, but one thing you have to remember is all of the people pushing this anti-trans wave right now are all financially driven and their viewers are going to get tired of the gay groomer stuff. Like it's been 99% of their content like for the last six months, year now. They're going to get tired of it. It's going to stop being the it trend. No trend lasts forever online. And they're going to either have these like Matt Walsh. He's either going to have to adapt or he's going to go back to being like. a. He's going to be like having maybe a million views a month on his channel. Because once all of his views, viewers and whatnot move on to caring about the next group you're supposed to be triggered about. They're not going to give a fuck about this continued nonstop wave of supposed gay groomer narrative because it's just going to get old and tired. Fuck, I hope it dies off. It will. Just like hating on feminism died off. Like, really, compared to 2016 and, like, the Gamergate era, how much hate for feminism do you see online? It exists, but it's nowhere close. It's not even, like, like you need a like a magnitude scale to measure it like how they measure earthquakes like right now the internet is like a category one anti-feminist when back in 2016 it was like cat four anti-feminist right or that's hurricanes whatever Hur hurricane scale um it needs to be logarithmic that is how much of a difference there has been and then of course immigrants remember how like for a whole year a bunch of conservative Americans were terrified that immigrant caravans were coming up to invade America from like from the border. It th they'll move on to the next thing. What group do you think is next? Um, I think it'll probably be Muslims again. It kind of it, it kind of depends, right? Because there could be like tomorrow, there could be some cop who murders a black man in the street who's like unarmed for no reason. And then there's a bunch of protests, and then the entire conservative thing for the next six months becomes black people bad. That that could literally happen tomorrow. So yeah. It could be satanic panic next, yeah. Hard to say. Date or so. Prior to this past Stop saying black man. No. This decade, this tiny group of people 
basically live the lifestyle they wanted to live. And there wasn't much attempt to stop them from doing so. It wasn't, we didn't really talk about it. It wasn't discussed. It was very much on the fringes. Well, he's outright lying here. I mean, the Daily Wi- he and the Daily Wire Stooges have been doing anti-trans contents for as long as I've been doing this content. Like, for as long as I have streamed and done reaction videos, I have been responding to Daily Wire segments claiming trans people are, are, are bad. And I've watched over the years as their rhetoric has gotten more and more, like, blatantly violent and vitriolic towards trans people as it's become more acceptable. Their, their rhetoric follows the money. But that wasn't good enough for you. In your vanity, you couldn't be satisfied merely... I love how much of a smug villain speech this is. It's so good. It's so... It was so perfectly crafted to be as evil as possible. Like, it fills my heart with joy to know my political opponents are literally pure evil. Like, like, literally, like, demonic video game grunt bad guy like don't even think about the morality of of their uh, of of unexisting them like that level of evil villainous through and through it's a good re- reaffirmation of my positions yeah he's like a bunch of disney villains wrapped into one like he's actually this is better villain writing than most movies right villain actually no it's a little bit on the nose it is a little bit on the nose i'll admit with the ability to live how you want you demanded the celebration you needed not just the ability to practice your lifestyle but you needed a parade following behind you and cheering you on the whole time and you needed affirmation no, now you are evil you mentioned black men killed by police and when i called it out you went to Disney. All right. Well, thank you for the fifty dollar donation earlier, but you're gonna get banned now because you're very obviously concerned trolling. I expect you to charge back that dono, but <laughs> good one. My God, your your obsessive, unquenchable need for affirmation. Have you noticed that nobody else walks around every day? demanding that the entire world affirm them every second. By the way, they they literally said this about, like, the suffragettes, at, like, protesting for voting rights. Like, you don't see us men run, running around bitching about rights all the time. And it's like, yeah, because you're doing fine. Oh, my Lord. I, I just, I, I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't get so... I shouldn't get so, like, emotional, because that's the point of the video. The point of the video is, and as I said, triggering lefties with blatant dishonesty and cruelty is a conservative virtue. The point of this video is for him to lie, and for lefties to see it and know he's lying, conservatives to see it and maybe know he's lying and ideally not give a fuck, because at least he's triggering the left and he's triggering minorities. Like, that is the goal. It is meant to be a literal, like, villain speech. No one ever did that. No one has lived their life that way, walking around looking for affirmation. None, none of the rest of us even think about that. I, uh, th- that is blatantly untrue. The, the the idea of anybody in any group, regardless, having an issue with looking for affirmation and everything they do is a known issue. Like tons of people have a problem with that. Like, like people who struggle with affirmation from their parents like people who struggle with affirmation from their friends like that is not uncommon like this is just this is just matt walsh just spewing random shit out of his ass to make it sound like everybody who isn't trans is so much better than everyone who is like it's like non-trans people don't trip when they walk down the down the street it's like what like, at this point, you're just saying shit to make it sound like trans people in every way are worse than cis people, which I guess is your goal, but it's kind of silly if you actually know the, like, know the game. The idea that you're going to walk out your door and you need to be affirmed by people? Affirmed? How is that anyone's job to affirm you? Well, there's an entire medical industry behind it, backed up by data, science, and studies that you actively are trying to argue is is fake science. When five years ago, 
you and Ben Shapiro were arguing that the facts and the studies and the data are on your side. And then as soon as lefties started to say, wait a second, no, it's not. You started saying the data is infiltrated by the left or the the, the institutions that collect the data, the the medical institutions, the scientific uh, organizations, academic institutions are all infiltrated by the left. The instant the left started calling you on your bluff that these institutions agree with you, you said, actually, those institutions are brainwashed by the left checkmate libs it's like okay so like no matter what you're right and reality is wrong okay got it you decided to do that you couldn't just believe whatever you believed about yourself nobody can stop you from having a belief about yourself you wanted the rest of us to believe it too you wanted to force us to believe it you wanted society to be he wants this video to play on like the the big like projector screens over the gas chambers as they bring the trans people into the camps by the way. Like he's literally hard under the desk right now at just the thought of this being the video that they play um as as the death camps are being kicked up. Be restructured around your self-perception. You? Yeah, Matt Walsh is a gross fucking person. And you wanted our children you wanted to induct countless children into your confusion, baptize them into it, so that the confusion you foster in them might affirm the- I love the religion. For the record, by the way, these people are religious and thus cannot think of anybody's motivations being not religious, right? Like, the, the honest people among Matt Walsh's audience that are religious literally- they, they, many of them who are religious cannot imagine someone whose motivations don't come from that kind of like full hearty, uh, faith-based conviction. So most of this guy's audience can't even imagine a world in which that's not how the left thinks. They think the left thinks just like them and has the same base motivations as them. So when they use words like baptize, they literally mean it. They think that like the left has a religion around wokeness that we're trying to induct people into. The confusion you harbor in your own minds. You pretended that you wanted freedom, but you had that. You wanted more. You didn't just want your own lifestyle. You wanted us to participate they had to edit him out going on a long, like, Hitler-esque rant about uh, death camps and uh, a, a, a degeneracy-free America. That's why there was the white flash there. In it with you. That's what this comes down to. You are demanding our participation. And what we are saying to you, some of us, is no. Can you get that through your heads? We are allowed to say I, I just, once again, I want to say this guy's paid tens of millions to tow this line. He, he's, this is just a, a unfathomably wealthy dude lying, knowingly lying for a paycheck. That's what's happening right now. I, I just, I, I need you guys to know. I just, I need to remind you guys. That's what we're watching here. A villain speech from a, a guy who is literally drowning in money for lying. No. We are not going to participate. You are the mouse who wanted a cookie and you were given the cookie and you ate it, but then you wanted to eat everything else in the house too. So I, I do love a very common uh, uh, strategy of conservative propaganda is belittling those that are on the left and belittle, particularly belittling the minorities the left advocates for, right? Like, oh... You want rights? Little baby wants rights? Mmm. Mmm. Why are you whining, little crybaby? It's like, it's it's a deliberate, it's a deliberate, like, belittling and, like, mocking of the idea of somebody being outraged at injustice being done upon them. Like, ooh, pretty cringe to be outraged at injustice being done to you. Mmm, pretty cringe to not just, like, take it, you know? Like, kind of, cr you're, you're an activist? Ooh, you're an activist. That's a dirty word, activist. That's kind of cringe to be an activist. They've turned activist into a dirty word. Have you noticed that? Yeah, you're so emotional, dude. Like, yeah. Some people object, finally object. And you break down in tears like a child who has to leave the playground. Yeah, there we go. Holy shit. I, I promise you guys, I have not, I didn't watch this video. I didn't pre-watch this video. 
There it is. Yep, there it is. I didn't pre-watch this. It's just that these people are very predictable. If you know what a uh, grifter or what a uh, a charlatan would say to a dumb audience to try to make them happy, you can very easily predict it. It's like if you if you know the the games and schemes of example for example of a phone scammer you can you can do something like what Jim Browning does right where Jim Browning the YouTuber who scams phone scammers he knows what the phone scammers are going to say and do because he knows how a scammer thinks right and how the, how they try to fool people he knows what they're going to say in that same way i have the experience of knowing what these scammers a different type of scammer are likely to say because i've i've gotten used to like knowing what the grift is i know what somebody who is a liar will say to a stupid audience to make them feel like they're being talked to by a smart person and they're smart for agreeing with that smart person it, it it's pretty easy to predict right anyway uh if you enjoyed this video please consider leaving a like subscribe ring a bell icon and you know what comment down below uh matt walsh leave them kids alone that's what I want you to type down below in the comments. Matt Walsh, leave them kids alone. With all that said, I appreciate all of your support in all of the forms it takes. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. And as always, have a good one.